on behalf of the Center for Church Development, uh, Owen Ross, our director, and Reverend Masters, Liliana, and myself, um, just welcome you all and thanks for being here. And uh, I would uh, like to invite Estiana, if you would be uh, able to lead us in prayer this morning. Oh, you're on mute, though. All right, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you so very much for this opportunity for us to come together as colleagues and just learn and study your word. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit on the Zoom call with us today. Give us the strength and courage to follow your, your leading of the Holy Spirit. Have your way, oh God, because everything we think, say, and do is done for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So um, I'm going to ask if, if you're able um, to do it, to ever have everyone mute so we don't have a lot of background noise. Um, and then if, as you have questions while our presenters are presenting, you can um, put those in the chat room uh, on, on the side if you open the chat room. And then um, Liliana will keep track of those and we'll try to make sure that we are able to, to track those and come back to them. Um, so feel free throughout to ask questions and, and we'll sort of um, keep an eye on those so, so we know that we don't miss any. Um, the purpose of this particular call and really all of the calls that we've been doing here since uh, we've been in quarantine is really uh, more than anything to leverage uh, our ability to bring folks together, um, to share some ideas of what's happening for uh, us to create an opportunity for conversation, uh, to develop some synergy within the conference through sharing ideas. And, and ultimately, you know, what we want is to just give people hope um, that uh, this is a time for innovation. Um, I've, I think I mentioned this at our last call. Um, we're, I've been telling our church planters, like, this is, this is the first and maybe only time in your ministry life where uh, metrics aren't as important, or at least the classic metrics that we've cared about in the previous uh, years. And so we have this sort of slate to um, innovate from that, that, that is, is sort of a unique opportunity for us. And so uh, trying some new things and um, developing new ministry and, and figuring out new ways to reach people, uh, which is why we're here this morning. And I think, um, you know, as, as we kind of look at our current reality that we're in, uh, I, I, I've been, I tend to break things down into like developmental stages or phases. And so um, when, I, when I step back and look, I think the first phase of, of this experience for a lot of us was sort of like, we we're just trying to react and pivot and, and just sort of catch our bearing in the midst of all of the changes that really came at us um, pretty fast, uh, fast and furious. And then the second phase was kind of, okay, we've, we've kind of got a sense of where we're at and uh, we're, we're sort of refining our, uh, and, and rethinking about how to engage our people and um, doing it, trying to do it better and better each week. Um, and, and now I feel like we're, we're sort of moving into this stage of reshaping our ministry for our current reality, I, I think we would all agree that uh, the, um, the reality of ministry now is unlike anything we've ever experienced. And whatever normal was before this, we probably aren't going to ever go back to that. Um, whatever normal, the new normal looks like, we don't really know yet, but, but we're having to really sort of rethink and reshape our ministry uh, for the times that we live in and, and being contextual and making the necessary changes. And, and really that's, that's why we're here today in particular to ask the questions of uh, how do we reach new people in our, uh, in our quarantine reality? Um, how do we then sort of collect data and, and connect with those folks? And then how do we connect those folks to um, our, our faith community and engage them in ways that disciple them and so th those are really the, the questions we're wanting to grapple with uh, this morning. And then um, as I sort of step back and look even further down the road, uh, I, I think that there's a, 
there, there's a thinking that we need to be doing as leaders as well. And, and maybe we'll come to this at some point in one of our webinars of what does it look like to relaunch? Um, every pastor in the United Methodist Church right now is a church planter because you're at some point you're going to be relaunching your church, right? And so you're, you're going to have this opportunity to um, maybe change some things that you've been wanting to change for a long time, but, but just didn't have the, the leadership capital to do it uh, or, or um, uh, have some new innovative ideas coming out of this season. And so um, how, how can we help you think entrepreneurially about relaunching your church uh, because you're, you are now all church planters, believe it or not. And, um, and so how can we resource you to do that and do it well? Um, and so um, basically an overview of our agenda this morning, we have four presenters. Um, in just a moment, I'm going to ask each of them to just uh, briefly introduce themselves um, in, in about a two minute uh, introduction. And then um, we'll kind of come back and I'll go through with each of them and have them ask them to sort of share with us what they're doing currently, um, particularly to engage new people, how they're collecting information, how they're connecting those people to their church and engaging them in discipleship. Um, once our presenters have finished, uh, Liliana is going to uh, share with you all and walk you through the process for our um, new grants for New Faces in Digital Spaces. Um, where you can apply for grants for equipment or whatever you need for, um, for reaching new folks uh, with, with your ideas. And then we'll open it up for some Q&A. So that's, that's, that's basically the agenda that we're going to go with. Um, so, to, so to get started, I'll ask each of our presenters to, um, to sh just introduce yourself really briefly to, to the group. Um, the, and, I, and we'll start with you, uh, Dr. Quick. Uh, since you're probably the the least familiar face to most of the people here, um, I, I met uh, I met Marty in South Carolina working with Path One, doing a a, a workshop there, and uh, really enjoyed my time getting to know him. And I'm really excited that you're here with us. So, Marty, why don't you introduce yourself? All right, thanks, Matt. Pleasure pleasure being here today. My name is uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Quick, and I'm currently serving as the associate pastor at Journey United Methodist Church from the South Carolina Conference. We are a 12 year old church plant, which we're not a plant anymore, but we were. And so I'm, I'm also honored to have one of my mentors and also the person that does, uh, does our congregational work for us, uh, Reverend James Friday, who's also on the call. So we just wanna bring you greetings from the South Carolina Conference. And I did do my doctoral work uh, around social media evangelism and I call it e-evangelism using social media for outreach. Mm, awesome, awesome, thank you. Uh, Brenda, are you on the call? Is she here? There we are, yes, okay. hi. Hi everyone, um, I'm Brenda Furman. I am a um, certified candidate for ordination um, on the elder track and also appointed um, as a local pastor at Union Coffee. Um, so clergy in full connection, um, coming to ministry from community development, community engagement, um, uh, and a former sociology professor. So really looking at how identities and communities are formed um, and how they have to change um, in urban environments. And so I am planting a new coffee shop in South Dallas. Um, or planting a new uh, worshiping community in South Dallas. Um, and luckily, since I'm appointed at Union, um, it is indeed going to be <laughs> a coffee shop. It took a little while for us to figure out what the community needed, but we're excited to be there um, and planting. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Richie Butler, are you on the call? Are you there? He's, uh, awesome. Yes, I am. There yeah. he is. How you doing, Matt? Uh, glad Good, to be man. with you guys. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, my name is Richie Butler, and I'm the senior pastor of St. Paul United Methodist Church in downtown Dallas. So glad to be a part of this uh, conversation. Awesome. And then finally, uh, Jonathan Perry. Are you on here, Jonathan? I am. Hi, Matt. Hi, everyone. It's great to be with you today. Uh, I'm Jonathan Perry. I pastor a community called Open uh, Open Worship at First United Methodist Church of Denton, and our uh, our 
community at Open is three years old today. Today is our birthday. Oh, wow. Um, and so I love the thought of us being church planners because our work began with building community and began by building community in home meetings, um, just like we are all doing from our homes and in the places where we are right now. We're at this place where we're, um, where we're building and rebuilding and maintaining those connections of the people who are um, who are going to be our, our launch team, you know, someday when we step back out into into face to face meetings, but also building that team that's really going that is being the church and is being the community right now in ministry and the places where they are and the connections that they have to. Um, and so glad to be with y'all. Um, amidst we've been having a big birthday celebration all day long today. So I may take a break for cake at some point, but uh, glad to be with you. That's awesome. <clears throat> Well, fantastic. Um, so uh, let's start with you, Dr. Quick, and you are you are sort of our resident expert because you're literally writing the book on this. So um, uh, share with us for about ten minutes some of the some of the stuff you're experimenting with, how you're reaching new people, sort of in our current reality, and what you're doing to connect them to the church and discipleship. Okay, first first thing, thanks, Matt. First thing I want to do is I want us to. Uh, pause for just a second, and we're going to have a eulogy for the church that we used to know. So the sun the sunrise was one BC, sunset March twenty second, twenty twenty. That's the day when the church changed forever. And as someone said earlier, that we're not going back to Egypt. So it's up to us to start to uh, have a biblical imagination about how we can get back to Matthew 28 and 19. And the church has to go back to our going identity, especially us as Methodists, in which our founder, John Wesley, was very creative in how he did evangelism. Now we just have a different mission field, and that mission field now is online. So my, my, my first thing that I need everybody to do is just shift your mind toward um, returning to our evangelism roots, to returning to our going identity. So now we just can't sit back in our churches and just wait for uh, people to come. They no longer do that. Uh, we have to go out there and we have to go where the people are. So my first encouragement is for us to get on board with all the different kinds of social media platforms that are available. Uh, if you're just starting, I would suggest to do one well and work your way into the other platforms, but make sure you have at least one platform that you're using in order to reach people. So we have, uh, we pretty much have all the platforms. Uh, we haven't launched them all formally, like TikTok. We haven't really launched that, but we are on um, TikTok and we're just working to see whenever we can work work that in. So the first thing we, we're doing here is we're able to, change our minds, mindsets and return to our going identity. Um, the second thing that, that, um, that I think is really important for us is to realize that, that this is real community. One of the arguments against my thesis that we could use a social media for going online is I, had a lot, I, I met a lot of resistance to it being authentic or real community. And I believe in my heart and I've witnessed that this is real community and we have to treat it as such. We have to be authentic and, and knowing that we're gathering online with people and present ourselves the same way we would present ourselves um, in church. So that's, that's what we, we really emphasize in our ministry here at Journey is this is real community. Don't shortchange anybody because they're online. Uh, treat them as the same way when they come in your uh, doors. For an example, we have our greeters who are used to working every Sunday. They are bored to death. So I came up with this whole uh, platform for them to be online greeters. And we tried it last night for Bible study just to kind of get them on board. But they're excited about Sunday. And I said, look, when people come on, the same way you would greet them, uh, if they came in the journey, if they come online and any of our platforms, you welcome them and you help facilitate and navigate as they navigate through our giving apps or as they navigate through if they want to join a prayer request. And so they're really excited. So 
um, again, we have to treat it as real community. Um, the next thing that we're doing here is we take very serious the fact that we have access to these people. So in other words, this is the new mission field. I mean, you literally can go around the world and connect with people online. So just last week, just to give you an idea of some of the people that came on live stream, there, were, there, were, there was a person from Australia, a couple of people from Germany. There were some people that were right down the street. So there was a bunch of different people who were able to gather with us. And, and, and it's, it's just amazing to see that. And not only are they, yeah, not only are they gathering, that we're also, um, we, we're also on one accord with one another. So I would emphasize that, that, that it's really important for us to um, be aware of the access that we have through social media. And the next thing I want to emphasize is um, the contact and follow-up system. Now, once, once you engage these people online, you're going to have to come up with a system, a system that allows you to touch people, like I said, be high tech, but also be high touch, that allows you the opportunity to engage, engage people so you need to follow up with somebody. Um, so our system works this way. So everybody who came in as a guest, we, we hope that they will fill out the guest cards that we have. Um, and so if they fill out the guest cards, this is what we would normally do in our sanctuary. If somebody came in as a, a guest, we would have them fill out this connect card and I'm responsible for calling them and say, hey, thank you for um, worshiping with us on journey a, a journey. And so we asked them, you know, what did you, did you enjoy the service? What could we have done to improve? So we asked those questions because we, we want them to know that we are really, um, we really want to hear from them in terms of what they have to say uh, and, and as they experience us from online. So I would just, if, if you're not um, engaging folk and asking them those types of questions, I think that um, you're missing some low hanging fruit. So come up with the system in which you follow up. Uh, for the last two weeks, we've had four families actually that that actually joined us um, uh, via online. Like last week, we had two families. The week before, we had two families. So during our invitation to discipleship, we placed a, um, the text line up. If you desire to join, if you desire prayer, um, you know, let us know. And we've it, it's been amazing. I'll be honest with you. I actually uh, was the preacher last week. I actually cried when I saw people join online, because this is what I had been, been telling folk from 2014. And again, I felt like Noah building the ark and nobody was like, this day is never going to come. And just to see that someone actually uh, joined our church. So make sure you had a good, good um, contact and follow up uh, system is very important. Last thing that you do have to be invitational. Uh, so you have to send out the evites and you can do this through, uh, if you create, if you create an event for your online worship, you have the opportunity to invite all your friends and all other people's friends as well um, to your fan page, and also encourage if you're doing live stream. If you're doing live stream, encourage people to share and do watch parties so that you can get your engagements up. Because it's not just it's not just being on social media. What I'm trying to get churches to realize that we have to dominate social media, meaning that it's just, it's just not enough for us to just be there. We have to make sure that we engage people and that we're not just there to talk about our church. Remember, it's called, quote, unquote, social media. So 80% of your posts, 80% 80 of our posts are posts that are more inspiration than information. So if all you ever do going on social just to say, hey, come join us for Bible study, come join us for um, our service, then you're not going to get the um, can't, you're not going to get the engagement that you think you will, because people want you to know that they actually um, that you actually care. I'll give you an example. This is what I, I posted this morning. This is every morning since the quarantine started. I post some type of self-care or some type of quarantine wellness check-in. 
And so I posted this and I said, hey, if anybody, um, let me know if anybody out there has gotten bingo. Now my wife let me know that this not, you can't get bingo diagonally. So, but <laughs> anyway, it's a way to get people engaged. And early this morning, and I, the best time to post, I'm on Eastern time, is about eight o'clock in the morning. And so we're already getting a bunch of, um, a bunch of people who are, who are sharing, hey, I got bingo. Or somebody's like, I got three out of the four. Uh, another one of the, um, let me show another one of these things. You got to show people that, that, that you really care about them at this particular, um, at this particular time. So another uh, popular thing is, uh, let's see. So I do these quarantine checks every day as well. And I change the color. So you want to, you want to mix it up. And so people will post hearts. So when we talk about e-care, right? Um, so if somebody gets a yellow or below, um, I'm usually going to send them a message via, and this is on Facebook. Let me just emphasize, this is on Facebook. So I'm going to send them a, a, a wellness check. Hey, how are you doing? And get that back. Now, if I get anything from a black, then that's when I would, a black or red, I'm usually going to call them. And what I've realized or, or what I've been um, finding out is that there are people who are not members of Journey that have been reaching out. Uh, like I had somebody that posted a black uh, last week. And so here's a person that's not a member of Journey. And so I'll, I'll be honest, and I was talking to Pastor Ashford, I was like, well, how far do we go with somebody? And the person was sitting there were depressed. So I was, you know, and I didn't have a number but I tried to engage. So you need to have some type of policy when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, pastoral care online. But that's how, primarily how I do my pastoral care. Everyone, um, our, all our lay shepherds who have certain groups, certain people in their groups, we send out daily wellness checks, and uh, we try to do as many as we can. We have over a thousand members, so it's really hard. I try to do 20, 20 25 a day. That's about all the emotional breaks that I have um, in a day. So your personal your personal self care is really important. But you will get some of the most honest dialogue ever. Right now, people are being honest. They're not saying, "Hey, I was glad when they said to me, let's go in the house of the Lord." They're saying, "Look, uh, uh, Reverend, I'm struggling right now." So those. Dr. Rick, can I just, uh, interject one second? Could you share? Absolutely. Could you share your screen one more time um, for that wellness sure. check? We didn't quite sure. get to see it. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, which one, the bingo or the um, the wellness I, check? I, I guess you don't know which one it was because you couldn't see it. Okay, Let's we see. saw the bingo, I believe. Okay, uh, right, and so. we didn't get to see the wellness check. I feel uh, that. Uh, couple All right. Of okay, so let me get that up for you. Okay, um, here we go. So it's the. Can you see it? Let me know if you can see it. It takes a little time to connect, so if you if you want to leave it up there and then just kind of, I'll slow down a little bit. Oh, it's okay, no problem. Thank you so much. No problem. Let there me know. It is. If, if, okay, we got it now. All right, so I change the color every day of the background color. And so did you hear me about how we uh, were able, how we do the hearts, every, somebody? Did you hear that part? How we do the yeah, hearts? Yeah, they heard you us? clearly. You did. It okay. was wonderful. We just couldn't see what you were referring okay. to. Okay. So, yeah. So when people drop the hearts, uh, make sure that even if it's a green or blue heart, make sure that you engage them with a like um, that they were seeing because a part of pastoral care, a part of helping people uh, being present with people is having them to be seen. And so that's, that's the social part, right? We're so we're, we're, we're on social media. A lot of times people will post things back and the, the young man that posted the black heart, several of our members sent him encouraging messages and they do that with one another. Um, if somebody is yellow or below, you'll see other people that, that also, will we'll, uh, reach out to those people who are um, presenting how they uh, feel on that particular day. So it's important to ask people how they're feeling as opposed to how you're doing. Um, and that comes from my background as a chaplain. I know that I would ask patients all the time, 
I will when I first started, well, how are you doing? I'd get pretty much a default answer. But when I said, how are you feeling or how are you managing today? I would get a different response. But this is, um, this is a great opportunity for us um, to, to really engage folk and show them that we truly care. Um, and just because we're not together does not mean that we can't, um, that we can't still engage. So one of our hashtags is uh, journey separated, but together church, uh, wherever you are, of course, you've heard the popular one behind the four walls and those types of things are really, really, truly important. And also one last thing before, um, and I'll finish up. I want to be respecting everybody's time. There are several, um, things that you can do additionally, like we started a YouTube channel for our children's ministry where you can download an activity and a lesson. And so you can just pre-record those and start your children's YouTube channel and make it available on your website. Um, and you can send the link out as well and allow. And so what we did was we use the, pretty much all of our, um, all of our servant leaders have children. And so the children are actually reading the scripture and engage with the parents. So some of the kids get to see their, their, their uh, leader and also one of their, one of their fellow um, uh, members uh, that's their age. And we also did a, an, an uh, Instagram youth um, group where the youth are coming together as well. So this is the time that we could be really um, creative. A lot of times, some of our best inventions come out of necessity. I know during the, the during the recession in 2009, I mean, yeah, 20, 2009, we got Uber because people couldn't afford cabs and people couldn't afford hotels. So we got Airbnb. So this is a time for the church. And it's my prayer that as the United Methodist Church, that we could actually lead, um, lead the charge in terms of e-evangelism and reaching out um, to people with this means of grace is what we call uh, social media. And if you notice that all the, the and, I, and I'll share this with you guys, that all the things that I said, they come together when they, and they come together and you put all the words and they spell out and they spell and they spell um, grace. So uh, I think that's really important that, that we, that we're able to use this means of grace. That's awesome. Thank you so much. That that's mm -hmm. fantastic. And we'll, uh, we'll let, well, I know we have some people that have some questions, so we'll, uh, okay. we'll, we'll come to those. Uh, one of them was in, in terms of the emotional check-in, one of the questions was, does it, does it go on your church page or on your personal page? Well, I do, I, I do both. Right. Well, and the best thing to do, um, it's going to depend on your team. And that was the last, then that was the last point that I actually, I just forgot to mention that create, you know, form a team. There are people that would love to have something to do. And of course they have to, you know, have the gift and grace to be able to um, provide pastoral care, but you need to um, definitely have people, enough people to facilitate. If you don't, I wouldn't share it beyond my, my church's page. Now me okay. personally, I share it on my personal page because, um, you know, I have people that, a team of people that will help facilitate facilitate that because here it is here's, a, here's an evangelism opportunity because I'm, I'm, I'm having comments of people like wow your church does this like you know I've never seen any any church that really reaches out you know so if you got the staff you got the volunteers absolutely so they see the share that I've shared it from journey churches page so whatever goes on my page it actually still is connected to journey so it's connected to a church versus me doing it personally well as a pastor, a lot of people know that I'm a pastor, but I'm saying that they also know that, that we're connected um, to Journey Church. Nice, nice. Um, before we move to Miranda, could you uh, email me or upload your PowerPoint mm -hmm. to, the, um, to the chat room? Or you okay. can email yeah. it to me and I'll upload it either I'll way. I'll do that, because I'll I'll, I, I pretty much did screenshots and I'll just upload them. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I'll do Perfect. that for you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thanks, man. Um, Branda, so you've, uh, you've been doing some experimenting with some online yoga and, uh, <laughs> ways of sort of, uh, connecting with folks that way and, and getting their information. 
even even shifting to where they register on a Google form so that you get their information so that you can follow up with them. Um, so, so share a little bit about what that experience has been like. How are you connecting with new people? How is this opening up opportunities for you? And how are you connecting those folks to the church and to discipleship? So I'm, um, thanks, Matt. I'm going to share, I'm just going to put the link to the Google form because it's really simple um, in the chat. So folks can um, just sort of, you know, almost copy and paste <laughs> if they want. Um, so I, I want to, so uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Quick, for all that you shared. Dr. Quick's definitely um, the expert um, when it comes to this. Um, much of what he shared, like, you guys would have to, like, pay, like, you know, $129 to, like, take the... <laughs> to take the online um, workshop. And so um, I really appreciated a lot of those reminders and a lot of those new um, perspectives as it pertains to the church. Um, I am possibly on the complete other end of the spectrum. Um, and so I, our plant was very much um, in person. We um, were a brunch church. We were all about uh, conversations at the tables. Um, we didn't even live stream, even though the other worship gatherings from um, our um, um, our partner church um, did do all of the do gatherings, do, um, share them on Facebook Live, share them on Instagram, and those kinds of things. We promoted on social media, but we did not engage um with any of our worship activities or discussions or small groups any of that online it was very intimate um encouraging vulnerability um and so i actually was very reluctant to do the yoga worship flow on um online um to bring it um onto facebook live um i initially so um we started a yoga worship series um during lent so it started with ash wednesday um, and then, as many of you know, two weeks later, um, we began the encourage. We began to hear encouragement um, to limit social interactions publicly. Um, I'm health compromised. Um, I have asthma and other underlying issues. I also um, I house share with another single mom. We had two kids, which could they could be asymptomatic carriers. So I took I took that very seriously. And two weeks after Lent started, <laughs> um, went to doing this virtually. And so I initially been doing it. We co-work um, uh, in our um, in our uh, planting context. So Union Coffee, the coffee shop, um, is in Oaklawn, and we're planting, um, intending to plant and open the new coffee shop in South Dallas. So I was in a co-working space in. Um, the intended neighborhood. Um, and that was, of course, to create the third space, right? Rather than um, I'd be floating around to some coffee shops that were, were within two and a half miles, but you all know in an urban setting, a mile to two and a half miles is very different than your context. So I had found a co-working space in that area and be began to do the Wednesday afternoon um, yoga worship series um, in our workout area. Um, and it worked out really well. I was meeting lots of folks, folks that wanted to be able to take communion, um, folks that were building a business and hadn't really been in church for a while. And so we're really glad to be able to connect um, and then shift quickly. So initially I just wanted to do it on Zoom. Um, and so initially I just changed all of the social media promotion um, to include a Zoom link. And, um, but, something just kept tugging on me um, to just someone actually a friend of mine um, who had been trying to push me to do um, to do yoga professionally I had just sort of been doing it within communities and as a as a means of creating third space um, and connecting with new folks um, I so at their at their request at the last minute I had my iPad on one side um, to do zoom and I don't have, I don't have Facebook on my iPad. Um, and so then I had, I propped up my laptop, um, in our house, we've got two moms, two kids, two guineas, two dogs. 
uh, and two bunnies. And so I propped up my laptop on the bunny cage and hoped that the bunnies didn't <laughs> knock over the laptop and um, really engaged the people that were on Zoom and just sort of passively had it running on Facebook Live while I was doing it. Um, and that created two things that turned out to be really important in creating this as um, a fresh space for connection um, and creating the opportunity for discipleship and meeting new people when we can't leave the house. Um, and what that was is because I was passively doing Facebook Live and engaging the folks on Zoom, I had to go back into Facebook and, there, and see what was going on. I couldn't, you know, I, there were comments and, and people joining in. Um, and so I engaged those people after the fact. So this would be the equivalent of like taking a connect card or asking, hey, so-and-so, I saw you invited someone, who was that? You know, can you introduce me to them if you didn't get a chance to touch them? And so I went back to the Facebook Live feed and sort of checked in on who, who had stayed, who had come in, who had come in and come back. Um, and who had left comments. Um, and that coming back to the comments is a very important thing. Um, whether you use Facebook Live or Instagram or whatever social media or even in Zoom, a lot of times in time, um, it, it will be lovely one day when our plant is 12 years old and we have a thousand folks and a hundred um, servant leaders. Uh, but right now it's like three of us um and all of us have kids at home and so we don't always get to the comments we don't have designated greeters per se um we have some uh some cut and paste messages of hello leave your comments um here's how to connect with us later that we sort of cut and paste in time to come in at certain times um or to come in afterward um and so going back to whatever live streaming feed on social media that you use um sometimes i do that later on that evening um if i if i don't have my kid if my little one's with his dad that week um if um if i don't um if i have the kid i usually can't get right back on and get to those comments because the kid's like mom i left you alone like he's literally hovering right outside of uh the camera shot if he didn't hop on me while i was doing yoga um, and so I'm, you know, I go and re-engage my family and then come back the next morning or sometime that night. Um, I will say this as a caution, um, if it is just you or if it is a small team, um, one of the things that I have been careful to do is, um, is not to rush back if I can't. So if I have to tend to the kid right after we finish yoga worship, um, I don't then say, oh, I need to go after he goes to bed and at 10 o'clock at night begin to respond to people. Um, because then they, they, it is a connection point, it is a community, you're setting a pattern. That boundary of going in <laughs> at 10 o'clock at night and them expecting you to be on at 10 o'clock at night um, is, not <laughs> is not a healthy one, um, at least not for me. And so um, I just set my, I asked Siri or I asked Alexa, Alexa remind me um, in the morning, um, you know, at 8.30, remind me after for? breakfast. Um, sorry, Alexa thought I was talking to her. Um, and so um, I will say as a caution, um, be mindful of your own patterns because that is the pattern just like in our, right? They know on Wednesdays, if they come in in the afternoon, that you're there sort of for open hours, right? They know on Fridays that, you're, um, that you'll that you take a phone call if it's an emergency, but that's usually your off day, right? Set those same patterns. And so as Matt was saying, we're now in this reshaping and refining. You kind of know when you'll be on and when your kids are gonna think it's too much. And so pay attention to those patterns for creating engagement. Um, as Dr. Quick said, it is actual engagement and connection. Um, and so What's connected to that for? point, um, I learned something. I've met, um, I've met probably At two new time? people a week, um, which is crazy because we're not leaving our house. Um, <laughs> and so I was doing probably about three or four one-to-ones a week, um, and two of them um, 
being with brand new people. So people that, that were in the community that I was planting um, and to be now sheltered in place <laughs> and still Who having a one-to-one -one each week with two new people is, I didn't expect it, not at all. Um, and so- When should I remind you? Sorry, Alexa, I got it. Alexa, stop. She's still trying to get me to remind her. To I'm talk. not sure what went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> to remind her of something. Um, and so um, what I realized is I was connecting by going back in the comments. Um, but those of you, you may not have been planters in a while. Um, but when it comes to like data, if you don't have a phone number or email address, right, it really kind of doesn't help you in the long run. Um, and so I found that in connecting, I would have to go back into Messenger um, I couldn't use some of my tools to schedule emails and connections that I was using. Um, and so I would need to work at 10 o'clock at night, but I didn't want the, I didn't want to like be in my messenger at 10 o'clock at night. And so how could I do that? So one of the per people that I, that, um, I met, um, um, a, uh, uh, a person who runs a nonprofit in South Dallas who I hadn't had a chance to connect with. I had heard of the nonprofit before. They do wonderful work. Um, and he um, had been on a health journey and had been really interested in yoga, um, but kind of wondered how that, how that went. You know, all the things that, that ex all the myths and, and misunderstandings about what yoga is and all of that and how can it, how can it align. Um, and so he had commented and said, thank you. Um, he had initially been attracted because of um, the song flow, the worship flow that I had, um, that I had along with um, uh, the yoga practice and then came back to it and had left a comment. So we had a one-to-one, -one. I'd never met him before. Um, and then he invited me um, to, um, you know, to his social media pages and to, um, through his social media pages and through his invitation, he invited me to um, sort of another virtual chat meetup. Um, and then, um, through that, so when I go to go to the virtual trap meetup said it was going to be via Zoom, and so I click the link thinking it's going to put it in my calendar, and it actually took me to a Google form. And so in the Google form, um, which just information about the event, they just asked for some quick information about me, and then there was an auto reply, because I know how Google forms work, there was an auto reply with the Zoom link in it that then came back to me. And I realized data capture. <laughs> and so um, even with just myself or with a small staff or with trying something new, um, you want to try to capture that data. And so to uh, Dr. Quick's point, it is an actual connection. You want to make sure that you're connecting. Um, so go back up and follow up in those comments, um, even days later. So I might follow up once. And then if it was something like, oh, I'm gonna try this, uh, I'll try this tonight when the kids go to bed, I'll circle back a couple days later and say, how did it go? Um, and so um, it's a real connection. Make sure you're in the comments, following up with people, even days later or hours later if you have to. Um, be sure that you're creating a, p a pattern that's sustainable and healthy for you um, in doing that. Um, don't feel like the pressure of doing it right now in social media. Um, and then the third thing that I will say is um, make sure you're finding ways to capture that data. There's tons of tools um, and uh, in Facebook, but then also using that Google form, uh, you can cut and paste like I, like I um, sort of like I did with the link that I left in the comments. Awesome. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, Richie. Tell us a little bit what's happening at St. Paul and uh, particularly how you're engaging new folks through your virtual happy hour. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, let me say, I have to jump onto a, another Zoom at 11. So uh, I don't know what time this is scheduled to end, but appreciate the opportunity and I'll keep my remarks brief. Uh, first of all, I just wanna give some context about St. Paul, uh, church will be 150 years old in a, a couple about in three years. Uh, you know, rich, long legacy, and uh, and also I'll give some some further context. I have been trying to get our team for four years 
to move us online. I mean, I literally say, hey guys, we need to do my worship experience online. Uh, I'm not necessarily, if we could do that uh, via um, uh, streaming live or at least recording and just putting it up and never got any, you know, we couldn't get any traction for whatever reason. Uh, and then cr the coronavirus happens. And on a Thursday, uh, it's clear that we're not gonna have worship on that Sunday and somehow we activate it. And so I, I think uh, within our within all of our churches, uh, when, we're, when we're called to step up, we definitely can, can do that. And, and our team has risen to the, to, the, um, to the task at hand. And so I will also you know, say that one of the things I think is critical is around communications. Uh, that is also to, and I'm just putting, putting our business all out in the streets, but one of our challenges has been communications. And so we've, we've figured out how to ramp up and do a better job of communicating. Uh, Cause I think we took for granted people showing up on Sunday and we could be sort of lazy around communications. You have to be intentional now with communication. So we are focused on over, right now we've been over communicating and now we're moving into what I call a rhythm of communications. Uh, and so hitting a, a regular routine of getting information out uh, to our to our people and to those who are um, who are connecting with us. And I am not the, the most, you know, I know social media, but I'm not really have not been fully engaged with social media. So I've actually and I think those of us who have to learn, you know, they say, can you teach an old dog new tricks? Well, I think we got to learn some new tricks. Um, and, and, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, so this is not a, a time where I'm fearful, definitely excited. I told our church that uh, you can, we're either going to be challenged by this opportunity or defeated by the problem. And so I think we're calling people to be challenged, to rise up and, you know, seek, uh, seek out new, new ways to do things. Um, but what I wanted to say around uh, adding on to that notion of, of communications, realizing that we're we're now online and we are completely social. You know, we are, we're an online congregation. Uh, and with that re reality, you know, wanting to, to make sure um, that we recognize how we reach new, new faces or in, in that regard. And one of the things we, we rec we know that, that there, there is a lot of worship surfing taking place. And so what we've decided to do is how do we, uh, make sure that we get people coming back and engaging in our worship and then from there digging and creating further connections with those individuals. And we do, we now know that, you know, and I think many churches probably have had a, you know, an uptick in people, especially if you're online, an uptick in people participate. We have more people watching us on online than we did who came to church. And so we're, and, and I, the reality is in, in this year at St. Paul, our theme has is a next level time. And I'm now about to couch that this is what I call our next level normal. Don't know what that looks like, but we're moving into a next level normal uh, for, for our church and that we're not going back. Even if we had an option to go back, we're not going back. And I'm so grateful God has made it clear. You, you, you're not gonna be able to do ministry the way you have done it in the past. And so with this notion of surf, worship surfing, you know, how do we retain people uh, to get them to, to come back to our, to experience our worship? And one of the things I will say to us is I think we got to think of worship um, different than we, uh, than we, than we've done it. So for example, our worship experience used to be about an hour and a half. Our worship experience online is around 40 minutes. And so you could, I grew up black. I grew up black Baptist. I'm now Methodist, but I'm still African American, and we like to, you know, worship long and strong. But I think recognizing that people, uh, you need to think of your worship experience. Uh, if they're surfing, then that means just like when you surf on the TV, you you tune in and you tune out. And so you want to make sure that that you're you are really focused on the meat of the matter. And, and, and so, you know, we're focused, we, we think of our, our worship like we would a, a sitcom show. I mean, most of us are, or when we think of TV or viewing something, it is really compartmentalized like you would be watching a, a sitcom. 
And so providing that, that substance in, 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 that, in that setting. So just wanted to provide that. One other thing we, we've introduced, and that is we've created a, what we call a virtual happy hour. And so it's a chat with, Pat, with the pastor. And so we invite people to sign up. Uh, we have guests as well as members of our church who are who sign up and we do it through Zoom. And so we spend, an, uh, it's set for 30 minutes. And first thing I ask is, what are you drinking? And people are typically honest. They'll show, you know, raise their glass, their wine, or, um, and one member said on this, and we do it every Tuesday and Thursday uh, from six to seven. And, you know, one member said, if we stay on any longer past, I'm gonna get drunk. And, and that's not in the Holy Spirit. So I said, well, we better tune off. Uh, but but we've, we've used that as a, as a way of connecting uh, with our people because I think also new, spa new faces, but we've got to figure out, especially for a church in our context, a lot of our members, a number of our members were not engaged online. So we've got to bring them along and make sure that we uh, retain and uh, transition and retain what we have as well. Um, and so that's an important point I think you just want to recognize. And the last thing I, I will say is, you know, we are still doing ministry. We're just doing it virtually, whether that is the Bible studies or at St. Paul, we are engaged in a lot of social justice work, which you may be aware of. I mean, in around race, race relations and specifically as it relates to like the, the, the coronavirus as many of you know, it is impacting the African American community in a disproportionate way. And so we have taken a proactive position and effort. And so a lot of that is being led uh, online in terms of campaigning and efforts and to make sure that people know that uh, our church is out leading. And that is also drawing people to our church. Uh, I was actually did an interview with a report with a reporter who now is you know, attending our worship experience virtually because we met through our effort uh, around this coronavirus issue that's, you know, specifically imp imp impacting the African-American community. And the last thing I'll, I'll say, a couple of just other neat ideas that we're rolling out. We're going to do a virtual uh, house party uh, next week. And so we will, we have a DJ set up and we'll do line dancing and a host of other, you know, things for, for people. And we will market that on our, through our social media. And the other thing I'll say is you have your social media, but you need to identify what I call social media ambassadors who from your church have, who are influencers, who have following and to get them to get the word out about what you're doing um, and, and the ministry opportunities that exist within your, within your congregation because they, they will drive, they can drive a lot of people uh, to you. Uh, and you'd be surprised who at your church, you know, you know, have thousands, if not tens of thousands of people who may be following them through social media. And I'll, I'll leave, leave it there. Thank you so much. That's, uh, that's awesome. Every time you share, I just love it, Richie. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan, you guys have been doing some awesome stuff with your uh, Sunday morning experience and some of your small groups. Talk to us a little bit about how you're sort of connecting with new people and trying to engage them in uh, discipleship and, and uh, with the church. Absolutely. Thanks, Matt. And thank you, Dr. Quick and Dr. Furman and Reverend Butler. And thank you to all of you. Uh, I've learned a lot already. And that's been the story of this whole process. I'm so grateful to be part of this shared learning community, uh, inspired by you and supported by you. And so I just wanted to share a couple of the things that really I've learned from all of us as we've been gathering together and some of the things that we've been trying to put into place uh, and grow into at Open. Um, some of these things are as much as one week old, and so they're very tried and true and tested. <laughs> We're all kind of flying, um, you know, building the airplane as we go, as they say. And none of us have done this before. We are all figuring this out and just want to say, like, y'all are doing great. And the fact that we are here shows that we've already glimpsed that even in this time, God is working in and through and with our communities for good, and we want to be a part of that. Um, and so this is a challenging time, but like every challenge, there's a chance to kind of rise to it in love 
and in a time to be a community of support and solidarity and compassion and connection and faith and hope and love. And, um, and so what we're talking about today is really how to, um, how to do that and to invite new people into that process. So much of what we talk about today is, you know, about technology. And so I appreciate um, everyone who's, who's mentioned that, uh, that for some folks, because of access, um, because of technological barriers, it's hard for them to connect. And so remember them and look for ways um, outside of perhaps this conversation to stay in connection, to stay into ministry, uh, ministry with them. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this offers a chance for new people to connect uh, and for our people to connect in new ways. And one of the things that we've seen is that it really, um, in some ways, levels the playing field between those who you know, typically are able or have that um, emotional ability to come to church uh, and those for whom coming into a church space is a difficult journey. And so in this time, church is accessible and safe in a new way, but it's also needed in a deep way. And so to now, now is a real chance to be, be the church in our communities in a wider way. And because of the questions that folks are asking um, right now, to be the church in a deeper way too. And so new faces are definitely coming to your spaces right now, uh, looking for those things that God has called each of us to be, and they're looking for the church. And so it's, it's uh, our opportunity to be it. And for that task, we need all of us in that. And so I love the social media ambassadors and the way that we're talking about, you know, kind of spreading this out. This is an incredible time to, to spread out the leadership, the voice, the evangelism that's happening um, and the connection and the ministry and equipping your people to do that. Because when we talk about reaching new people, so much of it is just organic. It happens um, through all of us, through folks inviting their folks. Uh, there's, there's ways to do it that you've heard about on Facebook, of watch parties, inviting friends, sharing the service before or during or after the service. There's some cool ways if you're going to be going live on Facebook to schedule that post you know about an hour ahead of time so that people on on you know before whenever your community meets for for a gathering that they can begin spreading the word and inviting their people to come join them in this time and um and what we're seeing is that the people are seeking that and so if you make it meaningful and authentic um if you make it something that helps people connect with god in this time they're going to share this with people um, and in particular, if you encourage them and help them see how important that is. It's also a chance when we're online to include the community of your, of your, uh, of your church in new and powerful and important ways. Um, because we're doing a lot of this on video, you can connect people into the worship experience and invite them to share their videos and, um, and to make them a part. And it's really important. I feel like we need to see each other in these ways. And so we've been going trying to think every week of what's something that we can do where we can ask people to submit videos. And so just on Easter, it was just get people to say happy Easter, or Christ is risen um, as, a, as individuals or as friends or family groups, and then sharing those videos throughout the worship. And it's just so encouraging to see each other and um, and in this time in which so much is so heavy and so, um, uh, so real for us to see smiling faces. Um, even in the midst of, of this storm. And so looking for opportunities to do that can be really important in that too. Um, the, uh, you know, some of the things that we've, we've done outside of the worship experience is, uh, is also just afterwards cutting out some of the clips of, of neat things that happened and sharing those individually. And that lets people, you know, we had a Palm Sunday uh, kind of virtual parade. We had a virtual choir. Uh, songs from the band that were particularly meaningful, some written out of our community or prayers or spoken word offerings. You're cutting those pieces out and allowing people to share um, what meant something to them during the worship experience kind of helps it live on um, and continue to, to minister to people as, as time goes on. Um, one of the cool things about this time too has been the opportunity to, to reconnect with people. Uh, a lot of folks, you know, may have been busy for a season or, or they might have been some of the slip in the back folks. Um, sometimes those are healthcare workers uh, that are the slip in the back folks. They can't make it every week because of their schedules or they come in late and tired. It's precious time with their people and with their families. And so it's a real chance to connect um, on a more personal 
level with people that you might not have been able to. And so I just want to encourage you to check in with your people, to reach out um, in a personal kind of way. Um, and in particular, you know, just tried to track down as many uh, uh, healthcare workers or people serving in some of those fields as possible using the community's collective knowledge. You know, who do you know? And, and making sure that we stay in connection and support and, and praying for each other in this time. Um, we've tried to, in addition to worship stuff, um, we've, we've tried to offer things during the week that, that could be helpful for people. In addition to discipleship opportunities and um, you know, Bible study type things, we've uh, offered a self-care panel discussion via Zoom. Um, we've had, we have each week what we call lunchtime lectures that are uh, just people from our community that are interested in something or know something about something that, that offer a lecture uh, to the community. Uh, we've had online art shows where we've invited people to submit what they're creating in the midst of this season. Um, doing other things like celebrating local businesses and nonprofits who are doing important work as well. Um, but I think uh, most of all, one of the things that we can use social media for as well is to help people connect with opportunities to serve. In this time, people are looking for ways to be together and to be for each other in this time. And so finding those things that are easy and available and accessible um, and connecting people with projects either that your community is working on or things that are happening in your city, uh, you can really be uh, an avenue for people to know about those things and connect. And so we've made just a real easy web page um, at opendtx.com slash serve. And so if you're interested in doing something, it's just kind of a list of some opportunities and you put a check box on one and we'll help you connect with a group that's doing that. And just, um, you know, as, as folks see a, a church that's really trying to be, um, even in the midst of, of, of the limitations and what we can do, still trying to be connected with their community and serve. Um, can be really inspiring, but it also leads to other opportunities. We just were invited by the hospital to come invite our people to to come chalk the the sidewalks outside of the hospital and in their healing garden where a lot of families come to wave to their loved ones uh, that are in the hospital right now. Um, and it's it's because our people have been showing up and and trying to be the church in the midst of this time. Um, we're also offering continuing to offer. Um, small groups as a place to connect. Um, those are real meaningful and particularly those that are that are invitational that we can point people to when we meet new people um, uh, as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about some of those uh, in the midst of this, but you know, some of those, like we have a, a mom's group that's, uh, that's been just a very invitational community of people who are, um, who gather together and invite new people. And it's a great place to point people for connection and support and resource when you meet new people. Um, having places that they can go to connect deeper is important. Um, and so on, on Sunday morning, one of the, um, one of the things that in, in our, you know, our, our worship time, we're inviting folks, you know, like, like a lot of you are, to say hello. Uh, we have a greeting time um, where they greet each other, let us know you're here, you know, let us know if this is your first time is a question that um, sometimes people respond to. And the cool thing is, um, as Brenda and others have mentioned, um, is that that info then is there in the comments afterwards that you can go back and stay connected with folks. You can reply to their comments, you can send a message to them. Um, if you're, you know, if you're not friends, you need to let them know to look for it because it might show up in a different place in messages, but you can follow up directly with people. Um, and it's just like regular Sunday on church. It's very important that, uh, that you talk to your folks about making sure that you're being friendly, not just to each other, but to everyone who comes um, in that way. And so um, that's a great opportunity. We have a lot of interaction that's happening on Sunday mornings. We try to style what we talk about in worship to invite people. We ask questions that we want people to respond to, invite comments, of course, have opportunities to have community prayer stuff as well and just interact with folks. Um, and I'll tell you, on Easter, when I ask people to share ways that they've seen Christ alive in our world in this time, it was the most encouraging thing. It was this nonstop flow of responses for folks that really 
um, just uh, just flooded the comments. It was incredible. Um, and so, you know, be watching as you're as you're able on on social media to see friends or members. It'll say, you know, this person was watching is watching with you. Uh, it'd be people you haven't seen in a long time. And so, just reach out and say, hey, I just wanted to check on you. Saw you, you know, saw you on Sunday. We also have a separate sign-in page um, that we invite people to go to. Uh, that is, you know, you have to go there specifically outside of Facebook, but it's our our sign-in page, and that is where people can submit email and phone number and stuff, as well as um, helps us get an idea of who was, who's watching too. Um, and then that connects them, our regular communication. Uh, they also, you know, particularly if it's a new person, um, get, a, get an email from, uh, from me at that point. Uh, if they leave a phone number, they'll be reached out to by, um, by either me or someone on our team as well. To. And so those opportunities are great to just kind of capture that thing. One of the um, important things that we've uh, that we've empowered the community to do is uh, just having hosts for our live stream. People who uh, who see kind of as their as their uh, opportunity to serve to be a host in uh, in the live thing. And so for open right now, we're all doing it from our homes, and so we're able to be present in the live stream a little bit more. Um, than you might be if you're sitting in a sanctuary, but you can still do that uh, too. Um, and so, but you might want to ask someone who's really gifted for that kind of uh, hospitality um, outside of the regular Sunday morning flow to be a part of that. And uh, Crystal Stroud, who's our, our worship and community leader at Open and Director of Communications for the larger church, wrote some best practices for, um, for kind of that hosting uh, an interaction on social media, um, put together a paper for that. And so I want to share that with you. I'm going to put a Dropbox link in the chat that she's put together. Um, it's been taken and made beautiful by, by our friends at Art Communication uh, too. And so you'll, you can see that sheet and it might be something helpful to share with your folks. Um, one of the things that you'll see on that sheet as well is, um, is that a, uh, is art communication is offering a online secret shopper uh, as kind of a way of, of serving the churches in this time. And so if you're interested in having someone kind of take a look, uh, surf your church's service and give you some ideas and some strategies about how to do it, um, you can connect with them and they'll uh, offer that as well. Um, we've been trying to do some ways of connecting also, like um, we've had what we call a Zoom after party to approximate that four-year or that narthex is the Methodist word experience of hanging out before and after the service. And so we'll just invite people to hop on Zoom uh, afterwards and had great turnout of people just wanting to see each other's faces and say hello. And, um, and so that's been a cool way to stay connected in this time too. Um, yeah, we, we, try, we do the follow-up stuff just like, um, just like Dr. Quick was saying, like these are real connections. And so do the follow-up stuff just like we would do on a regular week, um, connecting with those first time folks, uh, making contact in whatever communication avenue um, you can find to connect with them. Uh, right now, people are appreciating phone calls like they never have before, um, just to get a chance to talk to each other and, um, and all that. And so if they leave a phone number, you know, give them a call and say hello and, and check in and see how folks are doing. Um, and then the you know, having these ongoing discipleship groups, one of the things that we saw right from the beginning is how important this was going to be. And so just reached out to our small group leaders and tried to empower them to keep going. Uh, we got a couple of Zoom accounts on the pro level, which, um, you know, cost some money, uh, but it's, it's certainly an important investment in this time if you're able to do that. And made sure that they were equipped to continue meeting. And that's been really important because, and also equipped to welcome new people because as we meet people, pointing them in those directions of specific groups that, that we feel like they could connect with. Not everybody can pull off um, extra Zoom stuff right now, but some folks can. And so we have this mix of things that we're posting on Facebook, as well as opportunities to connect in Zoom. Discipleship stuff, community stuff, you know, outward facing practical things, like I mentioned. Um, we have a pub theology night, some Q&A nights, some practical seminars. We have daily devotions that are going out. 
um, those outward facing lunchtime lectures. Then we also just have fun stuff. We have a game night that we invite folks to where we play um, some games together over Zoom and scavenger hunts, uh, just kind of um, ways to, uh, to just smile together, which is important in this time too. Uh, one of the groups that, that has been important is we, we have a group called GLOW, which is a um, LGBTQIA led community uh, within the larger open community. And, um, and that's been important in a, both in a meeting kind of way and in just relational kind of way, because your young adults and your college kids uh, that are a part of your community are, sometimes they're back home. Um, they're not always in, in the places where they've been able to, to live into your church communities and into your, your spot. And they're looking for connection. But there's also some who can't right now um, their parents are choosing where they go to church on Sunday morning and, you know, all of that. And so it's a very vulnerable thing to, um, even with the door closed, to participate in, a, in your church or in something like that. And so um, just think through the people that you're seeing and that you're connecting with and think of those that you're not and do your best to reach out to those in particular that you're not seeing right now and making sure that they know um, that you're thinking about them, you're praying for them, uh, you're here for them in this time too. Um, and so just remember all of those different, uh, different kind of constituents and, and folks that are in our larger community. The con connection point is so incredibly important right now. Um, and it's, it, it is a chance for us to be the church in a brand new way. Um, and so when you do this kind of work, uh, outside, um, of connecting and really the pastoring work in the midst of the week it can make Sunday feel like this celebration, like this homecoming uh, for us to all bring our honest, authentic lives right now and find this tenacious hope that we find in God and in each other um, that is growing our faith, that's, um, that's shaping our lives and is helping us um, make it through this and be the church together in the midst of this time. It's a, that's kind of the, the basic stuff, but I'm happy to engage with whatever questions y'all have as well when we get to the Q&A. Thanks. Cool, cool. Yeah, I appreciate all of, uh, all of our presenters. Um, I just want to hand it over to Liliana quick if you want to kind of take us through our grant application and um, the new Faces in Digital Spaces grant opportunity for people in North Texas. Oh, you're on mute. You're muted. I'm that person, right? The person that's always muted. Hi, everybody. Are you guys still awake? Don't fall asleep, please, okay? We're, we're in the end. Thank you guys uh, for continuing to be with us. I'm going to run through with you guys really quickly. I want to share with you, one, the purpose of the grant, the purpose of why, as the center, we thought <clears throat> it would be a good idea to give a grant out, <clears throat> who can apply for the grants, and walk you through the application process, okay? So some of you may be asking, who is this grant for? You know, can I apply for it? What, what is it? So yes, um, the grant is for any church in the North Texas Conference, small, medium, any size church, okay? Any size church can apply for this grant, and the purpose of this grant is our center really wanted to help offset the expenses that you guys have been having and uh, during this time to be able to launch and enhance uh, your online spaces. So we understand that right now they're, you know, we're living in really difficult times. So we're trying, that's the purpose. We're trying to help you guys offset the cost of some of those expenses. Our desire, um, Really, like Dr. Quick said, our desire is that if you haven't already done so, the purpose of this grant is really for you to connect with the new people that are visiting your online spaces. Now, I understand that this is going to this grant or what we're going to provide you will help you enhance your capabilities or your internet or whatever it may be to be able to also give a better product to your members. But our desire, our true desire, is that you use this as well to be able to connect with new persons that are visiting your online spaces and to find ways, new ways, innovative ways to disciple them. 
Um, so not just do that, okay? So those are a quick thing. I'm gonna share my screen with you really quickly and walk you through the application process. So if you look right here on the NTC website, can everybody see my screen? Just say a little thumbs up if y'all can see my screen. Okay, good, great. Alrighty, so here on the NTC website, gonna go on here, and you're going to see on the top, kind of on the right hand side, NTC centers. And we are the Center for Church Development, the center that beats all centers, the most amazing center. <laughs> I'm a little biased, but yes, we are here at the very, the first option. So again, you're gonna go to the website, NTC centers, you're gonna scroll down, church development, and you're gonna go there and you're gonna see kind of our intro information here. On the right hand side, you're gonna see new faces online grants, okay? So you're gonna go there. Okay, I'm gonna explain again. NTC website, NTC centers, church development. Once you click church development, you're gonna go here and you're gonna see here on the top, uh, on the tab on the right, you're going to see new faces grant. So you're gonna click that. And here's the application. You're, you can read the information that we wrote on there, it kind of gives you a detailed information of what we want um, and how we want to share this grant with you and kind of the focus of this grant. Now, you can fill out, it's pretty simple, it's about five questions. And obviously here's um, a tab, excuse me, where you can fill out all of the information. Please don't leave anything blank. Fill everything out as you can. And um, this link will go directly to me. So I will be, and including my team, we will all be together looking at the applications that have come in and we will be able to um, give you a response soon. So I have a couple questions um, for uh, you that I had thought about. So you're probably asking yourself, what is the turnaround time? You know, what, how, when am I gonna get my check, Liliana, right? Everybody wants their check. Um, the turnaround time is about, I'm gonna, and my hope and my desire is two weeks maximum. All right, our hope is that we wanna get you this money quick because we understand that right now, you guys have a lot of costs uh, with trying to uh, get this up and going or just costs in general. So we wanna make sure that we get this. Um, another thing is that it's $500 maximum. So usually our New Faces, New Spaces grant is $1,000. We lowered it so we could be able to expand to more of our churches. So we're hoping to really help out as many churches as possible. <clears throat> So turnaround time is about two weeks from the moment you send in your application to the moment that you get your check in the mail. <clears throat> One of the things that I do wanna share with you again is our center, the conference office is closed. And most of you know this, the ladies are going once a week just to cut checks. And usually checks get cut on Thursday. So that kind of, you know, lower, um, pushes our, our dates a little bit, but if, for example, if you fill in your application on Friday and I look at it, just, you know, know that it's gonna take some time because they don't check, cut the checks until Thursday. Um, so that's just kind of um, a little tidbit for you as well. Another question that I thought about is, can we get reimbursed, reimbursement for funds that we have already spent? Yes. So you can you we will send you the check and you will utilize as the funds as you see fit don't send me your receipt saying hey i spent this you know a month ago just fill, fill the application out let us know if if it's for reimbursement you can let us know there and we will send you the check and then you will utilize your funds as you see fit okay another <clears throat> question that i thought is restrictions are there any restrictions to this application? One grant per church. So we are going to try and get, again, as many churches as possible. So we wanna make sure that we get as many <clears throat> churches. So it's just one 
one application per church. And you're probably asking, oh, well, I've already applied for new faces, new spaces grant. Can I get another one? Yes, and we will see. <laughs> yes, our hope is that we can definitely help you if you have already received a new faces, new spaces grant. Um, it just, um, it may vary. We will have to kind of look at that and see how many people we're getting in. Okay, so I believe um, also, so I'm available to you guys again. I've told you this before. I'm gonna go back on my screen here. We're gonna go to our staff directory here. And you're gonna see our wonderful, beautiful faces right here. <laughs> so here is my phone number. You can call me anytime. That phone is currently linked to my cell phone. So you can call me. If I don't answer, please leave a message. And feel free to contact me if you have questions or you have any doubts about this application. But our hope, is that you really, really apply for it. Our hope is that we will help you during this time and be able to um, utilize the funds that we have that we had originally allocated to help you during this time. So I'm also gonna leave in my email address right there for you guys. If you need to contact me, please feel free to contact me. All right, let me look at the chat here for a second. Um, are there any questions uh, about the application process or anything? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can look. Um, are there any questions for me in particular about the grant application or in general? I know, um, Matt, we had a couple questions for our presenter, but since I'm on here, are there any other questions as far as application goes, going in, applying for your grant. Good, are we good? Liliana, I put it in the chat. I don't know if it's showing up yet, but <clears throat> for this case, are planting churches and their partner churches considered different churches or does one negate the other? Uh, they're going to be different. Um, so if you're uh if you have a partner church uh you know you guys uh, you we understand that it's kind of separate because you still do your separate ministries so we understand that the the need is probably very different so yes you will be separate any other questions as far as grant application goes please share this with any churches that you feel also may be in need of applying. Again, we, our and, hope uh, and our desire, I'm sorry, go ahead. Mary has, Mary Murphy has a, uh, can you unmute her? She's trying to talk, but she's muted. Mary Murphy. There you go, go ahead, Mary. Yeah, I wanted to ask Liliana, if, uh, if my need is bigger than three, $500, what, how do you deal with that issue? So currently, thank you, that's a great question, Mary. Yes, um, we understand that some of your needs may be a little bit above 500, uh, but currently that is uh, what we are willing, we are able to offer based on the funds that we allocated currently. Um, it, you know, maybe that we can have a conversation about it, but to be able to help as many churches as possible, because we really want you to go in, apply, and uh, get accepted, and, and for us to go ahead and send you the funds. Um, so it, it may be something that we can talk about, but for right now, the 500 is uh, the, t the top tier of the grant. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Liliana, there, there was another question um, from Kyle asking about uh, just in addition to financial needs, that just the needs for uh, technical um, consultation to plan and choose what new equipment. And I would just say, Kyle, if you want to email um, me or, or Liliana or really anyone in our center, we, we can, we'll do our networking to connect you with the people that can find the answers for you and give you that consulting. So we're happy to uh, partner with you all and, and just sort of the intellectual capital as well. <laughs> Yeah, I did see uh, that one of our pastors as well asked for, you know, saying, well, I, I know some of the technology, but not very much. So uh, we're figuring out that there is a need. So we will be able to, um, thinking of forming maybe a little group of people that are really tech savvy 
that can really get one-on-one -on -one with you and try and uh, give you some of that coaching that you may need. So I have that on my notes currently and we will try and, and see how best we can support our churches that may not be as uh, technologically savvy as possible. And and that's the case, please email me. Um, say, hey Liliana, I'm one of those churches that really needs help. Um, and don't be ashamed, you know, everybody knows about technology. And uh, let me know and we will get you connected as well as be able, uh, write it in your grants. If you feel like that's something that you need, um, we can definitely support you. If you don't let me know what your needs are, then it's tough for me to kind of understand and kind of uh, figure out what we're gonna do as a center. And okay, I, I wanna to respond to that also. Kyle, we have one of our district superintendents has, that has hired a person that is, uh, make, he's made access to us just for that particular need. So let us know and we can connect you also to that person that would be uh, willing. And that's just for anybody uh, um, that can help you get started with that. Awesome. Um, I, I know there was a couple of questions and some I saw some conversation happening in the chat room around uh, how to engage um, folks who are more age experienced um also known as elderly uh in terms of our digital um th their digital ability or or savvy and how, how to connect with that particular demographic so i just want to throw that question out there any of our presenters or any of you all that are have have feel like you've done some um important work and good work in engaging people in your congregation who uh, maybe older and not know their way around the technology as well. How are you doing follow up there and pastoral care? Um, uh, I'll just say it briefly because <clears throat> I put it in the comments, but um, we're actually mailing things. So <laughs> we have uh, we have a lot. We don't have as many um, older members, but. Um, we do um, have a lot of uh, older partners and donors that support the ministry. So um, uh, there's lots of art being made by the uh, kids with our younger families at home. And we don't have a place for all that art. So we uh, started mailing those along with thank you notes. Um, and then we make little videos. The little kids like to put them in the mailbox and put the flag up. We make little videos. It's just me and like one other person. Um, so we can only do a few a week. Um, but we send out the videos and post them online and folks kind of like to see who's going to get the mail this week. Um, and they know it'll come around. So no one's really been hurt that it wasn't them this week. But um, so that's been a way that we've been um, using um, sort of the asynchronous. Everyone isn't going to engage the online or the social media or the video at the same time um, as a way to stay connected. Yeah, mailing is awesome. Um, we're also doing phone calling. Um, we made a list of of everyone who began making a list of everyone who doesn't have an email address as a way of identifying uh, some of those who might be isolated from technology in this time. And then beyond that, uh, expanded that to some of our more isolated and folks in, in care facilities and just partnered everyone up with, with some people in our church who volunteered to make phone calls. Um, and so once a week, we've got a team of about 40 folks who are calling um, 200 people uh, and making connections that way. And we've given them, you know, kind of a script, but they've taken it and run with it into friendship at this point. And so there may be, you know, you can help people, you can guide them through uh, some basics of how to use Zoom or how to connect on, on Facebook, but there's, uh, there's other ways to stay connected and those are valuable and important in this time too. And also there's a, there's a call in feature on zoom that you can, they can dial in to zoom calls. They can't see it, but they can hear it. And you can also connect the zoom with Facebook live stream so they can still hear the service if they can't see it. And it's very, it's very, well, let me not say it's very simple because that will mean that I'm not taking into consideration everybody else, but there's, there's instructions of how to do it and how to um, marry those two together and allow the, you know, the uh, older 
congregants to be able to be involved. And like they said, phone calls work. The first thing I did was take a list of all our 65 and older people. Those were the first people I called um, during the quarantine. Okay, I'm uh, one of those 65 or older. And one of the things that I'm uh, concerned about, I'm pretty tech savvy, um, but as we get older, uh, we don't have the ability to multitask and look at so many different things at once. So, you know, when we have our Zoom group chat over to the right, and then I'm looking at who's talking, and then I'm looking at other people in the group, uh, it becomes very confusing. Uh, we have used Zoom with our 65 and older group here where we're living uh, with a men's group, and that works really well for those that are tech savvy. Uh, we had a couple that just got so frustrated between inoperative uh, uh, hearing devices and going between a phone and a pad and so forth so on that they have basically fallen out of the group um, and so i think it's something that we be, need to be mindful that even though the normal is definitely being changed um, we need to be careful of uh, the people that are going to fall through the cracks uh, because of the technology and a lot of those folks are the ones who support the majority of our churches they're big givers and so it's real important to be proactive to uh, teach them not the technology but to teach them the rationale behind it and how it's becoming ministry and it's uh, not just um, spending okay. money so to speak. Uh, Jack I I like that point and something that I hadn't brought up before. Um, so I know budgets are tight, um, but one of the things that um, I sort of said right off the bat to our partner church, to our executive director is that I still needed, I didn't, even though I didn't expect to have one-to-ones per se, that I still needed my budget for that, my coffee budget. Um, and so I've been sending, um, uh, through through email gift cards for coffee for them to order something co on coffee um, My seminary actually also did this for us. We would normally be gathering. They sent us like a $10 Grubhub um, uh, Gift certificate because we would be sitting So they um, What we and then I I send a note and say I'd love to sit down and chat with you while you have a right um and so they get that, and in doing that, in connecting and bridging, it gives the opportunity um, to sort of bring down that stress from the frustration um, and just check in on them and sort of bake in some of the reasoning behind why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, that, that is a, a great idea, Miranda. I'm, I'm thankful for what you're doing there. Um, the one other thing that I wanted to say is, is that what has always been, uh, for me anyway, in helping people to connect online like we're doing now, is I've had my older folks uh, somehow work it out with people in the church or with relatives that they have this iPad or they have their uh, computer and they work with that individual for them to see their grandkids live. Once your older folks see their grandkids and their great grandkids live, they are sold on the technology as far as I'm concerned. That's been my experience. Hey, Jack, you make a great point and I appreciate the things that, that you were able to lift up. I think that as a part of our pastoral care for our older members is this change is real grief. It is a transition. It's real grief. Honor that grief, honor that pain, honor that transition, be patient with them and understand that, 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 you know, their perspectives are different than some of ours. Like my mother who is 70, my mother-in-law who is 72, and and they were rejecting uh, getting on social media, as you said, until they realized that if you want to see your grandkids, uh, they're on social media. We don't post anymore. We don't send. I mean, we post. We don't send pictures. And so, uh, and after both and both of my my mom and her mother and my mother in law lost their spouses, and they that was our way of connecting with them when they were going through stage of grief depression. And now they're you know as it took them a while. 
now they pose. Uh, like I tell my mom, don't say anything about me when we're live streaming. You know, she'll just say, hey, son. So I'm always like, mom, don't, you know, send stuff. They go live. But in order, we have to be patient with them and just kind of guide them on. And I think that's the same way with our members. Ageism is real, especially in this COVID-19 uh, climate that we're in. I've seen so many people, older folk, that have, have, have posted how they're feeling. So let's make sure we honor them and have as much patience as we can. So thank you for lifting that up. So um, we have a lot of people that are older that don't have computers. Um, I have a 100 year old aunt who for 15 years we tried to get on it, no way. So um, for people like that um, and anybody who uh, is on my guest list right now, I make sure that if they're that age or older, and not older than 100, but if they're like in their mid 70s on up, and um, they don't have, they don't do Facebook, they don't do online anything, they barely, they won't even watch the church service on the website. Um, we're dropping off um, CD players if they don't have that, and we're going old school and copying, and we have been for years copying the sermon, the sermon and stuff, the service on um, CDs, and we mail them to them. And now we're adding to that list of the people who can't. I know it's old school, but that's what they are. So. No, that's meeting people where they are. I think, uh, uh, what was that guy? Jesus did that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Absolutely. One other thing that I did want to share with you guys on the website, there is a Zoom that we did a couple weeks back about technology. And Zach uh, at Howl shared with us a device that he also sent his uh, people that are not that tech. And it's a small device. It's, I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> but it's a, a tiny device. All you gotta do is press play and they load it or they put their sermons on there and they would deliver them and then back and forth so if you go on on our on that on our website where the COVID-19 link is you look for it and there the device is there we actually went in we gave you links and everything to be able to if you need to and again you can use the grant money to buy those devices and be able to connect with those that are in need that maybe are not that technologically savvy as well. Wanted to let you guys know there's a lot of stuff in that particular webinar about technology. Yeah, one, one friend that I have, if, if you're thinking about ways to do um, outreach, uh, one friend that I have has, they've adopted a, uh, a retirement community uh, home and basically ask the home to let them know whenever there's a birthday and one of the one of the people on the team will go and stand outside the window so they're outside of the window of where the person lives and with balloons and we'll sing happy birthday to them and you know just sort of have a conversation so just finding ways to like just be that presence of grace and that presence of love um for for people in this time that you know that feel isolated and lonely um I think we can get creative and, and there's just so many opportunities for a gospel people uh, to make an impact. So we've also worked with the uh, chaplain at some of the facilities and through the social coordinator yeah. to call, make FaceTime calls on their phone to talk to some of the people at the care facilities too. And so the, nice. the chaplain will go around to rooms and, you know, use their phone to to do FaceTime. That's amazing. <clears throat> well I wanna I wanna honor everyone's time, but is there any other questions um that are that are pressing out there that you feel like that this week won't be complete if you don't ask it? <laughs> yeah man during this quarantine how do you keep your beard so so neat, man. I'm struggling here. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I hear all these people complaining about not being able to get a haircut. I don't even know what they're talking about. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm headed your way, brother. I'm headed that way because I'm, I'm struggling here. Like, you know, I have no shame in my game at all. <laughs> 
That's awesome. Well, hey, grace and peace to you all. Um, it is truly our privilege and honor to serve you. You all are on the front lines doing the real work of ministry, and we so appreciate the work that you do. And if there's anything, any way you think we might be able to help support, please reach out. We, we want to. We're here for you. And um, it, it's, uh, it's always a joy. So have, have a great rest of your Thursday. You too. All right. Take peace. care. Blessings. May you all be blessed. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>